Okay, folks, we're going to talk about safety today because lights are dangerous and you should be very afraid of the entire process. Uh, no, don't be afraid. But you should be cautious and careful and practice safety. So here's a couple of things that you need to know about lights and lighting in order to keep your fingers and toes and everything all in good working order so you can continue your craft of being a creative and awesome filmmaker. So, the number one thing that you need to know about lights is that they are slow. No, <laughs> that's my drawing pad that's slow. Lights are hot. They are so ridiculously hot. Um, they put off light by resisting the flow of electricity and that builds up a lot of heat and the heat then drives the actual glowing of the filament which then puts off light. So they're actually heaters first and then they give off light. So what does this mean for you? It means that every part of a light can get hot. So you need to protect your hands with some big old honking safety gloves. So uh, that's my approximation of what a safety glove looks like. You need to always have good protective uh, equipment like gloves when you are handling lights. So um, you want to make sure that you have these even if you're just going to make a quick little adjustment, a little bit of scooch right there, a little bit, a little bit of a knob adjustment, a little bit of barn door closure. Those are the types of things that will actually get you burned. Uh, because when you're sort of not thinking about it, you're like, oh, well, let's just do a quick adjustment. I'll just grab it over here. And oh, my God, my hand is on fire. So, um, yeah, you don't want that to happen. So remember, always have the glove on when using it. Basically the uh, the line here is no glove, no love. So love being the ability to use the light. So that's number one. That is very important. It is hot. The lights get hot. They get hot very quickly and uh, every part of it can get hot. So don't try messing around with it without your gloves. Now the corollary to this is that it takes them a long time to cool down, which means after they get hot and you're ready to pack up and you've shot your shot and you're ready to uh, get on and move on to the next thing you have to give them time it takes a long time for them to cool down so don't uh, don't turn off the switch and then just grab the light and go because again you'll be you have your fingerprints burned off and you'll have to live a life of crime so that's not what you're here at school for so remember to give them a good uh, you know 15 minutes or more in your schedule to cool down at the end of your shoot. You will need that time. And don't put them away hot. Even if you have your gloves and you can put your lights away hot, they're going to sit in the case next to each other just melting through things like power cables and the casing and uh, nobody will like the outcome of that. So be very careful about the heat. Now the other thing about lights is uh, a little bit more obvious is that they are bright. <laughs> they're bright for a reason. Uh, we use them to illuminate things and to bring up the brightness so we can shoot our shots. Uh, and that's very good when it's intentional, but you have to be careful with the brightness of the lights when people are not expecting it. And this usually comes into play when you are turning a light on. You don't want to blast somebody in the face with a full shot from a 1000 watt light uh, when they're not expecting it uh, and probably don't deserve it. Uh, <laughs> this often happens to uh, talent on set or other crew members. Uh, it's like playing golf. You don't want to go knocking uh, you know, golf balls around uh, without letting people know that they have projectiles coming at their head and threatening their very lives. So uh, instead of calling four like you do on a, uh, on a golf, I was going to say a golf set, a golf course, on set we say something similar, uh, but we say striking. Uh, this comes from an old uh, term when they used to use something called arc lights where they used an actual big piece of electricity and carbon rods they actually did a process called striking which meant they were about to turn on this ridiculously hot light uh, the name stuck the technology has moved on but uh, it's pretty common practice now to yell this on set uh, before you turn on a light so that everybody knows hey there's a light coming on uh, I should probably not stare directly into that that's not going to be good for my health so always call out striking before you turn on a light. Now, the corollary to this one is that what you're doing when you do that is you're actually getting everybody's attention on set and, you know, sort of typical normal human behavior is to, you know, once they get their attention, they go, huh? Hey, what are you talking about? Oh yeah? Bright light in my face? Hmm. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to do that. So, you know, your, your seasoned professionals will know when they hear striking, they'll just kind of avert, avert their gaze. But, you know, people who haven't been on set a lot are probably going to be more you know, sort of in a reactionary mode. So here's what you do. 
you, you call striking and then you wait a second and look around and see which people are actually now looking at the light. Uh, and then, you know, once they see, oh, striking. Yeah, okay, uh, that was just totally like reactionary on my part. Sorry, I'm gonna look away. Then you turn on the light. So, you know, it takes a few seconds. The, the idea here is that you don't wanna blind anybody, right? Because everybody's trying to do their job. Nobody's trying to go to the hospital. Nobody's trying to live off a disability on this. So, um, you know, everybody would like to keep their vision for, a, uh, for the visual arts. Uh, so please do uh, follow these guidelines so that nobody gets injured. So lights are hot, lights are bright. Uh, they're also heavy and sharp. <laughs> so there's a couple of things that you want to keep in mind when you're using lights and light stands. And that is, uh, you know, obviously you want to have your gloves on. That'll keep you protected from a lot of things. But you also have some basic um, set uh, dress code for lack of a better term. Now, you don't have to get dressed up in a suit and tie, but you do need to have uh, reasonably safe clothing um, so that when one of these heavy or sharp things falls on you, it's not going to be uh, the end of your toes or something. So this usually basically falls into the idea of your footwear. And you need to have closed shoes, closed toe shoes. You don't have to get combat boots, although, you know, those do work pretty nicely. Steel toed, uh, even better. But the fact of the matter is anything is going to be better than a sandal uh, or a flip-flop or Crocs or whatever the uh, fashionable thing du jour is. So make sure that you have closed toe shoes on. Uh, and other things can help, you know, pants instead of shorts, but all those things are a difficult call. But the shoe, the footwear is definitely big because not only are there big heavy things that are held up in the air on stands and obviously subject to the laws of physics and the typical nature of wanting to fall downwards due to gravity, um, there's also cables and lots of things to potentially trip over. So, you know, what you have on your feet really does matter and is more likely to let you continue to work that day rather than having to go to the emergency room. And so, that's pretty important too. So this is this is point number three. Point number three, they are heavy and sharp. Uh, so be prepared for that. And you know, treat the objects with respect. You know, like you, you're not. It's not like handling you know a, a, a wild honey badger because uh, they don't care. But um, it is you know kind of like handling knives. You know that are sharp and heavy and and, and cooking wear and things like that. So use caution, please. Okay, so. Also, let's see, they are electric. <laughs> so a little bit of electricity safety. Uh, our lights are electric, they are not gas powered lights. Uh, they are powered by the electric grid. And that has a few features that we wanna think about in order to keep you and the equipment safe. So electricity, what do we need to know about that? Well, it boils down to this, two things. A, you don't wanna shock yourself. B, you don't want to destroy the light by shocking it. And C, you don't want to burn the location down that you're working at. So, sub points under electricity. You don't want to shock yourself. Obviously, uh, your footwear, insulated, uh, rubber-soled shoes help a lot. Your gloves help a lot. And knowing how to connect the lights uh, and the cabling is very important too. And this also helps protect the equipment. So what you want to do is, is take this approach. You've got a wall plug, right? Stuff is going to be plugged into there. And you've got an extension cord, which we call a stinger in the film lingo. And then you've got your light. It's on a stand. And it's got a power cable coming off of it. That's going to go into the uh, extension cord, right? What was I saying? Sorry, I fell asleep there for a second. I bored myself to death. Uh, so you have an option here of, of when you're gonna plug in what. So, um, and oftentimes you're going to have a uh, power switch uh, on the light. What's a good color for the power switch? We're gonna put a red, nice red button there. A little happy, little happy red button. So yes, that's what we have to work with now. So the order of operations here is important. Uh, if you plug, the light into the stinger first and then the stinger into the wall here's what happens this is where electricity is it's coming to the to the 
like my sound effects. It's coming to the wall from the grid, uh, and then it needs to get all the way to the light. So here's what you need to know. Um, anytime that live power reaches a sort of passive portal, there's a chance that it's going to do a, something called an arc. It's going to jump. It's going to get so excited about the potential to go uh, you know, down this path that it could jump out as a spark and either hit you and shock you or hit the equipment and short it out or hits, you know, old rags covered in kerosene that are just laying around the set and immediately combust into flames and have a problem. So what you want to do is you want to, you know, A, don't have rags soaked in kerosene at your location. That's that's a big one. Uh, but B, you want to you wanna make sure that you're making this last point of connection at the right spot. So, so where do you want this last point of connection to be? You know, obviously you don't want it to happen at the plug on the light. If it jumps zack, right there, it's going to blow your light out and you're going to have problems there. Uh, so that doesn't do you any good. And you don't want the light, you don't want the electricity to jump from the, the plug uh, and the wall because that could cause a short in the electrical current uh, in the wall and you might blow a fuse and not have any power. And, uh, you know, these plugs are difficult and expensive to replace. Now, what's not difficult and expensive to replace is a stinger you usually have lots of those they're not that expensive compared to lights and doing home repair so your stinger we consider to be sort of expendable in this situation so the order of operations that you want to do here is one you want to connect the power cable to the light so that that's nice and secure and you're not going to get a spark there and then two you want to connect the stinger to the live power source and then three, this is your last point of, of, of connection here where your live is about to go uh, directly to the light. This is the place that it's more okay to have a spark happen because worst case scenario here, you're gonna lose your stinger and your power cord, but you're not having that spark go directly to the lamp. You're not having that spark happening directly to the, um, the what's it called? What is that called? A plug, a socket, an electrical outlet? Yes, one of those things. So plug your, plug your cabling into your lamp, your light, your, your light projecting device, plug the stinger into the wall, and then finally connect the two in the middle. Uh, if it makes sense, this is uh, basically what happens in uh, Back to the Future when Doc Brown is connecting the cable to get the lightning that comes down and it goes through him. He is at that sort of weakest point there right in the middle. It's 1.21 gigawatts of electricity can happen right there in the middle and you'll be safe. So again, remember, your last thing will not be your light. Your last thing should not be the wall. Your last thing should be the safe little playground here in the middle. So that if we lose those cables, then no big deal, right? Not a big deal. They're just cables, right? We just get new cables. We don't have to fix the house. We don't have to buy a new light. We're doing good. Okay, so Electrical Safety 101, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, the other thing about lighting and safety uh, with electricity is the idea of not blowing a fuse because of amperage. The amperage is a little... Uh, a little complicated concept for the electrically uninitiated, but here's what you need to know. Your house has a fuse box, and the fuse box is there to keep things from blowing up. <laughs> and you have a series of these fuses, which are little tiny pieces that only let a certain amount of electricity go through to an outlet, or a series of outlets, right? So they are regulating the amount of electricity that goes through here. And the way that that's measured is in amps. Now, the math to convert watts to amps, remember our lights are, are, are using watts. So let's say that this is a 500 watt light. It's a little complex to figure out the conversion of watts to amps, but here's what you can do. If you divide by 100, so take 500, divide it by 100, call that 5 watts, now 500 watts to 5 amps, 
then you're actually overestimating. It's actually 120 uh, or 110 actually that you're dividing by. So if you divide by 100, you're actually overestimating the amount of amperage that this particular light needs so that you won't overestimate and blow this. So general fuses around a house, you wanna know like what they're rated at. Uh, usually they are somewhere around 20 amps. Some of them are a little bit less, some of them are a little bit more. But what this means is you know that you can sustain 20 amps worth of light through the fuse box uh, before it will trip. It will cut that out and blow the circuit and cause all the lights to go out and you'll have a big problem on your hands. So what do you do to protect this? Well, um, you want to distribute your plugs. So don't plug everything into one single outlet. It's kind of hard to know um, which plugs go to which fuses, but generally speaking, uh, when people build houses, they'll, they'll try to wire different rooms to different plugs. So um, if you're using a lot of lights, uh, don't plug them all into the same outlet. Uh, distribute them around through the room, distribute them from other rooms, pull, pull a stinger in from another room, uh, and just be safe. Don't, don't try to overload one socket, especially if you have a really bright light, like a thousand watt light, don't plug anything else into that one. Uh, and also make sure that other big electronic devices are not on or about to come on, like, I don't know, stoves and refrigerators and microwaves and all that kind of stuff. Um, you want to try to keep that as separate as possible. So um, it's, it's not something that's completely in your control, but it is something that you want to think about when it comes to light safety because you don't want to blow anything out. And that's the big deal. Lights are hot. Lights are bright. This sounds like a song. I don't know. Maybe one of you guys can make a dope beat for this and, and and make a safety song out of it they are what are they they are they're they're heavy sharp <laughs> with all these with all these disclaimers it's like why are we even using these things it sounds terrible um no when you when you learn to use your tools you won't have a problem with this but i do want to make sure that you guys are um aware of the issues i don't want you to go out there and hurt yourselves and they are electric um, so keep all this stuff in mind. So, you know, wear your gloves, let people know when you're turning a light on, wear the right kind of clothing and shoes, and know how to plug things in in the right order. Use all these pieces of information to your benefit so that you can spend your time making films instead of sitting in the emergency room, and everything will be well.